This is a 95 Ford Ranger two-wheel drive with a 2.3 four-cylinder in it. This is the second part to removing and replacing the rear end and checking out the used one. Clean your threads off around it, the opening. That just takes a 3/8 extension on the ratchet. Turn the square hole. This has a magnet on it, and if it has any debris on it, wipe it off. Then put your five pints of 90 weight high point grease in it. Your new grease will come with a sealed cap on it. Just take something, put a hole in it, make sure it's clean. Don't leave any pieces laying in it. If you do, just make sure they're still attached. Cut the end off of the nipple that goes on top of it so you can get the grease out of it. This is the only way to put grease in. Be putting two and a half of these bottles in it. Two and a half bottles is just an estimate, pretty close. I put two and a half in it, and I'll put the plug back in it. Once I get it underneath there and bolt it in the truck level, I'll take the fuel plug back loose and see if any runs out of it. If it does, you should let it run out of it until it stops. These rivet holes being packed with really dark brake material is a clear indication the wheel cylinder is seeping brake fluid onto the shoes, which is detrimental as, as it wears the liners down a lot faster when they get wet. And evidence it's damp on the wheel cylinder and there's black powder sticking to it and it just looks wet that'll have to be replaced because these shoes absorb the brake fluid they deteriorate faster and they'll also lock up on the drum it'll lock this drum up and then that the wheel on this side will spin backwards when you hit the brakes due to the spider gear configuration in the rear end wheel cylinder has to be changed when the wheel cylinder is leaking fluid outside, it can also suck air inside, and you can lose most of your brake pedal over that. I'm going to check the self adjusters and make sure that they're not frozen. Looks like somebody's put shoes on this used rear end recently in springs. The cable's not broke, so at least ahead of the game, other than a wheel cylinder. Yeah, there's a rivet hole completely stopped up with brake material. They should be nice and crisp and round holes. They're packed with brake material or the stuff's degradating the lining. I'm going to jack the truck up and set jack stands on the frame and the head of the rear wheels. I've set the truck frame pretty much I just set the these really tall jack stands right on the leaf spring where it sits in the front hanger in the front and then just before the rear end bottoms out against the shocks I put two jack stands against the wheels holding the load up off of the shocks Now 
I need to take the rear wheels off of it. Take a screwdriver and catch that slot and pop that center cap off and remove the 19 millimeter lug nuts. Take the wheel off. Both sides. Now that the wheel's off, went ahead and took the drums off sprayed some penetrating oil around the center axle flange and just take a hammer and just kind of keep hammering on the drum in a circle until it dislodges. I go ahead and break whatever brake lines fittings you want to break loose. They're all 11 millimeter fittings. Use a line wrench. I'm going to take a wire brush to these U-bolts, wire brush them all off and spray penetrating oil on them, both sides. Then I'm going to take this 13 millimeter or half inch, whichever one you want to choose, bolt out of the differential housing holding the emergency brake cable bracket and the brake line block down and get this speed sensor unplugged and unhooked from the old rear end zap the 12 millimeter 12 point bolts out of the dry shaft flange there's four of them on it shock nuts and bolts out lower ones you can go ahead and take these brake shoes apart and get your emergency brake cable out of there if it's salvageable this one's trashed if you're going to put new cables on it you can just cut them off and pull the rear end out with them attached but you need the uh, cables in there to hold this self adjuster help the self adjuster arm out through that emergency brake arm there it's going to be kind of held forward but not to the point of supplying the shoes got the u-bolts wire brushed up and spray with penetrating oil. They'll perform a lot better coming off if you knock the scale off the studs or put new ones in it. The dry shaft yoke is off the differential flange. A benefit may to leave one bolt half in it while you pry the flange off or, or just tap on it with a hammer and there's some holes right underneath the edge of the flange. You can stick something in there and pop it loose and then let that bolt catch it so it don't hit you in the head. I've got most shocks bolts out. And this this is a little bolt that brake line block in the holder for the emergency brake cable down. Took it out. Don't forget to take your vent hose loose from the frame. So what we're going to work on is the U-bolts. The ABS speed sensor is unplugged. I'm going to go ahead and take this wheel cylinder and these brake shoes off of this passenger side and show what a, just a couple of these simple brake tools do it's got a hook on the end of it and then a, a bevel on that end to pry against stick a hook underneath the spring Remove the spring. This 
just like that. And this tool has got rib splines inside of it. Catches these hold down cups. And these are gold up pretty bad. Like that. Now the self adjuster cable. Lift up on this adjuster arm. It's just got a hook snagged on a loop in there. And keep track of this emergency brake. which direction that goes. Sometimes they're slotted, sometimes they're not. That's pretty much it. I just take a pair of dikes and push that spring back and pick that cable out of this arm. And then compress these little fingers around it right there to pull the cable out of it. There's a couple of 3 8 bolts holding the wheel cylinder to the back brake plate. And go ahead and push these fingers down. Just push the cable. Keep tension on it while you're pushing these down. Now just take a 11 millimeter nut off the brake line and the two 3 8 bolts holding the wheel cylinder in place. Trying to take the U bolts out of the rear end, holding it to the leaf spring. If you don't want brake fluid leaking out of your line all over the place, you need to put a rubber hose with a plug on it or a plastic piton inside the line. And that'll stop the fluid from doing that. Now I get the wheel cylinder out of there. like that be sure you keep track that these plates this hump faces up I'll be putting them back and the U-bolts back in their same places in the same direction you might be ahead to break all four of these loose just break them loose so get them moving before you take them all out one at a time so they'll have something to hold on to while they're being turned because once one side comes loose and the other starts getting loose it just acts like a spring more or less Put plenty of penetrating oil on them too. He advises these dudes are going to be extremely hot after that. The nuts are anyway. Let's 
set your plate off from the same orientation. Okay, it's just been held up by the jack stands. Now it's time to put a floor jack under the center of it and let it down out of there. You might uh, tie up your emergency brake cables just to help hold that mess up back there if you left it in there. All right, the jack stands are out from underneath of it. Well, that looks good to me. Now let's put this one in there.